Welcome back to A Vapor's Journey. I'm Jason here at Savior Penguin Studios. We're, of course, powered by Moved Vapor. Coming at you live with a new mod review, Bobby Jeffers Angry Train Mods. You may have remembered our Ghost Catfish review from back in the day, because, you know, we're old school over here. This is the new Express triple parallel battery, 90 amps of shut the hell up. This thing, oh my god. We're going to get into it here in just a second, but uh, I did want to say thanks again for watching all the videos, keeping up to date. Uh, we're a little backlogged on a few things that I've made promises on. I apologize, guys. We're definitely looking to get caught up, get all those things out that I promised. As you know, it's been crazy around here. Anyway, back to the mod. Bobby Jeffers has come up with one beastly, wicked, just device from doom here the express is quite simply one of the more powerful boxes i've ever put my hands on and i can't say enough good stuff about it right here we've got number zero this is the prototype this was bobby's own personal that he built for himself and he goes listen i'm going to put these into production i'm going to do a little more fit and finish a little more cl you know cleaning up on them but i want you to get you wanted to get this in your hands i wanted you to play with it I wanted you to tell me what you think so i have done that I have had this thing in my hands for a week. That's seven days of nothing but net here. And just so you understand what I'm talking about when I say this is a beastly box, I am not the smallest hand guy in the world, but I cannot wrap my hands around this thing. It is huge. This is my Hades clone, 26650, towering above it. Once we put a uh, once we put Natty on this, we are dealing with a serious box. Cloud Chasers, beware! This is this is definitely out there to compete with some of the other box, the Below boxes, uh, Mad Wieners, uh, all the stuff that you see out there that people are sporting the big batteries, dual, triple. This is the first triple parallel that I have ever seen personally. Doesn't mean they haven't been out there for a minute, but it's the first one I've seen. So let's go ahead. We're gonna lock this little guy down. This is the Tobe clone that I use in 26650 format that I usually stick on my Hades. As you can see, this thing just towers. It's massive. That's kind of cool, though. Let's go ahead and give it a vape. I'll be honest with you. I had some trouble using this thing on fresh batteries. Uh, right now, I've, I'm using a 24-gauge Canthal, uh, 0.22 ohm build, uh, lower than I have ever built before. But given the distributed load, I figured it was safe. I am definitely using my E-Face, uh, E-Face, E-Fest batteries. These are the 30 amp jobbies, the purples. Uh, very important thing to note, anytime you're building to do sub-ohming, be careful. Talk to somebody with some experience, reference your charts, make sure you're not overloading your battery, and never, ever, ever use anything but an IMR, MNKE, EFS, Sony VTC 4 or 5, you want a battery that's going to be chemically compatible with running sub-ohm. ICR batteries, CGR batteries, bad news, you're asking for trouble, don't do it. Anyway, what we're dealing with here, typical 510 connection, so all of your 510 goodies are going to work. We do not have Ego Cone on here, but I did test it with an Ego Cone adapter, worked just fine. A little too powerful for the Addies I was using. My poor EVCs looked at this on, <laughs> no. Uh, we do have side firing button, which is awesome. He's got this kind of spiffy little copper, uh, copper plate on there, which didn't seem to have any particular function except to look cool. And, you know, I'm all for aesthetics. We are using the Bobby Jeffers typical magnetic door now. It is what I consider the hybrid format because it is using the MOSFET switch in addition to a, a high amperage uh, a physical switch. So very cool stuff. Let's go ahead and vape this thing before uh, I talk my own head off. Amazing. Now we all know that the cloud typically has more to do with my Addy and build than what power I'm using. So why would I want to run a triple parallel box? Well, the answer is simple. Available power. Distributed load. I can go lower, run longer, than I can on a single or even a dual battery scenario. Uh, Bobby had said that he had used a 0.1 something, 0.1 X uh, build, and he was able to vape for two solid days. I can definitely vouch for that. On my 0.22 build, which was as low as I was willing to go, uh, I did feel like I got good amount of power, first hit to finish. 
it actually got a little more vapable as I kind of hit that middle ground when I hit that little bit of a voltage drop kind of in the middle of the battery there. And uh, I was really satisfied with the device. It functioned first time every time. That's, you know, a typical Bobby Jeffers trait. It's what I'd expect from any mod. And uh, it just, it was a resilient, constant, minimal voltage drop device. Uh, we got it figured down to 0 0.34 voltage drop. That's that's pretty phenomenal uh, for dealing with something that's got, you know, MOSFET switching that isn't a direct physical connect, copper to copper or, you know, silver to silver. <clears throat> And that that just that that astonished me. I thought that was pretty good stuff. I gotta rock this thing again. That's some cloud action right there. In a minute, when the air clears up and you can see me again, we'll start doing the details on this device. Once again, I did go ahead and stick with my EFest batteries. I didn't want to play with anything else on here because I knew that I was gonna to want to go sub ohm. Uh, the advantage to having that triple battery distributed load is that you can go low. I suspect running something with, you know, a, you know, plus one uh, ohms impedance or resistance, pardon me, I've been told that impedance is the wrong word, but a plus one resistance is definitely going to give you a good run time. It's going to run real hot. I mean, just dry fire, you know, semi dry fire in this thing, not even trying to get a vape on it. I mean, it's just pouring off of there. There's so much available power, guys. Uh, I can't say enough good stuff about this thing. A few things that I noticed before we do the teardown, and I show you everything about it, I did feel like uh, fit and finish could be a little better, but of course we're dealing with a prototype. This is, okay, how am I going to make this fit in there? You know, what, what am I going to do to, you know, accommodate a button? How am I going to get my copper contacts in there? So, I mean, I really feel like uh, for a first effort scenario, we're dealing with a magnificent box. Uh, you know, a little, little clean up on the cutout, you know, maybe sand down some of the rough edges, that kind of thing. But I'm sure the production models are just going to be significantly better. Uh, I've heard and seen from some of the other people that have gone ahead and already pre-ordered that, uh, you know, they're excited about the device, they're excited about the box. Uh, fit and finish from the pictures at Angry Train Mods, just it, it looks it looks phenomenal. So we're going to take a quick pause. We're going to get set up to do the uh, video of the teardown, and we'll be right back. Thanks for watching. Okay, so here we are in the teardown portion of our video. Uh, once again, we're dealing with the Angry Train Mods Express. Here's the now semi-standard uh, magnetic door. You notice we're ro rocking three batteries here. Let's go over the connections. We've got standard 510. Like I said, he's got it mated up pretty well in there. It looks good, works good. Uh, one of the things that I noted is that, you know, we've got the little dressy copper piece right there. And this button is surefire. I mean, I have absolutely no complaints about the, that button. It's got a good tactile feel to it. Uh, short throw, I'm not really having a mash on it in order to get it going. So that's kind of an advantage as compared to other mods that I've had to use before. We are dealing with his MOSFET configuration, which is why I end up calling it, you know, a hybrid sort of scenario. Uh, as it does save on the switches. I mean, doing a direct dump of all 90 amps directly through a switch, I could see that being a problem. So this is definitely a good way to go. We've got all copper contacts. Uh, he's got them set up so as uh, they they appear to be wrapped around some sort of uh, non-conductive board, like a circuit board, breadboard kind of thing. So let's go ahead and talk about the things that I'm actually the the only thing that I would like to see an improvement on in, in regards to this box. So, popping out a battery, you'll see we got the squishy spring on the negative terminal contacts. Only thing in the world I don't like, that right there. That little piece can pop loose if I'm, for instance, only running in dual parallel mode. Wish those could be secured. I understand if they can't be, but, uh, I, I would definitely like to see some way of securing those. I, you know, whether they get crimped on the bottom end or however it could be done, I couldn't tell you. But uh, all in all, good contact, very minimal voltage drop. The way he's got them set up is absolutely you know, viable. It's useful as long as you've got batteries in there, you're not going to have connectivity problems. We do have a... Whoop, see, that's what I'm talking about right there. We do have a 
sort of hump for the positive terminal. So your flat top batteries are going to work. Uh, they're going to make contact no problem. And you don't have to rely on button top batteries. So good stuff there. Unlike the Ghost Cat, where I was able to basically tear the device completely apart for cleaning, I do not have that option here because of the way we're built up. And while I, ooh, and of course now I've got a semi-stuck battery. That's that is a result of you know having some minimal clearance going on, and you know it's to be expected. There we go. Let's see. There we go with another negative terminal trying to pop out. Spring is trying to get loose on me. Okay, so we're all back together. Uh, because everything's soldered in place, this is not going to come apart uh, readily for cleaning. So I did notice that when I got a little juice in the bottom there, I had to dismantle and kind of get in there with uh, uh, with, a, with a rag and, you know, something pointy, a pen, uh, something non-conductive, just to avoid any potential problems and uh, clean that up. But we've got good shrink wrapping on the contacts to make sure that... Uh, Nothing shorts out when you're jimmying around, when you're moving your t contacts around, when you're playing with your batteries. You know, no big deal on that. Uh, lots of good uh, leadless solder. I believe he was telling me he was using non-lead, non-acid solder at this point. So that's cool. Uh, it's not going to outcast. It's not going to give you a funny taste. It's going to, you know, work all, all through the day. But that's what we're dealing with here, folks. We're dealing with a fantastic device. Minimal complaints, sure fire, first fire every time. Nothing about this thing. I mean, a little tight on the battery carriage, but you want a snug connection anyway. Not a major issue. If I stick an Addy on there, I'm good to vape. Uh, my runtime on that was about two days, and I'm a pretty heavy vapor, uh, even though I'm rocking, you know, uh, zero milligram, you know, nicotine juice for the most part. And there we are. That's the Express. That's the Teardown. Uh, please leave me questions in the comments boxes, and uh, be sure to subscribe. We'll see you for my final thoughts. So here we are with my final thoughts on the Express by Angry Train Mods. Bobby's a great guy. I like working with him. I am completely honored that he picks me to do these reviews. So first of all, thank you, Bobby and Angry Train, and to all of you out there watching. Here's what I can say about this mod. A lot of power ease of use, just phenomenal device. Uh, vapes like a champ. I'm getting a solid two days run time. Uh, last time I checked, Bobby was saying that the, uh, that the sale price on these is going to be about 200 bucks, which for, you know, multi-battery parallel mods, you know, given that it's hybrid nature and there's a lot of work that goes into this, that's, that's in the fair neighborhood. I mean, uh, the baller on a budget isn't going to probably want to run out and as their first box mod, try and bag this, but you won't be going wrong if you save your pennies and do that. Um, as far as overall vape quality, build quality, no problems with the switching. A little tight on the battery fit, but I understand why. So it makes getting them in and out of there a little tricky sometimes. Uh, I kind of would like to see, as you saw in the uh, teardown, the bottom negative terminal pins do like to pop out when they're not actively being held down by a battery. I would personally like to see a way to maybe change that, like crimp the end or something so it just tabs up just a little bit and they don't come popping out on you. Uh, I think you're going to be looking at people losing those if you're not careful. Uh, other than that, there is absolutely nothing wrong about this mod. There is nothing bad I can say about it. Overall, we're looking at a thumbs up. As far as devices that I use, this is definitely getting an 8.5 out of 10 for usability, fit and finish, and overall quality of the device. So with that, I want to thank you for watching again. My name's Jason. This has been a Vapor's Journey.